Welcome back. Today we're going to machine some cheap brake discs. The problem is that they're getting a bit belly shaped. It's just the way the um, brake system is designed on that car. It, it always wears the brake discs a bit more on the outer side. The, the, the thickness is still good, so we can skim off on half a millimeter or so. We dialed it in on the center surface. It's, it's pointless to film that because we can't see the indicator. And uh, if you look at the runout we've got here, which is about maybe a hundred or so, yeah, that, that's just a wear pattern. That looks good to me. So let's find a suitable tool. We don't need to reset the brake so we can machine both sides, and uh, that should give us a concentric thickness, which is the most important part, otherwise the brake pedal is pumping. All right, let's set that up and uh, machine it. So it's just removing the rust now. That little bit of runout doesn't really matter because that puts us a, a pattern on the, a machining pattern on the disc, which is a bit off the uh, rotation. So they should wear better. It's probably going to be a bit boring now. I guess it's uh, getting a bit of the rust to it. Yeah, I could have fouled in a little bit better, but it doesn't really matter. It's about a millimetre, one and a half, so... Bare metal now, that's good. And as with the brake drums, you don't want a super fine finish. Makes you wear in the brake packs a lot better. Looks good to me. No weak spots. No, no weak spots. All right, let me find the right hand tool and uh, do the other side. So we right at the edge. What a machine can do. I had to angle the top slide a little bit outwards to get enough stick out on the tool here, and. Uh, Hopefully that's going to work. Everything is on maximum. The problem is the disc is actually hitting the, the cross slide. I'm not entirely sure if this works. Yeah, I expect some chatter 
because we actually playing with the limits of the machine here. Let's see how it does. Uh, back here would help. But I need to look for another tool. I'm not happy with that. Okay, let's try that. It's just I'm running out of travel here because I can't. I'm on full left hand with the with a um, cross slide with a compound, and um, I can't go any further with the with the saddle because I'm hitting the the disc. So I'm going to try that now. See what happens. <laughs> I can't go further in because I'm hitting something here. So let's see what we're gonna achieve here. Let me come back when, uh, when we reset the tool in a different position. So we reset the tool hold and everything. We put the pop slide as far this way as we can. And uh, that's about the best geometry I can get out of it. So let's run that in and see what we get. Very little clearance angle on the tool here, but I can't go any further. So you gotta lift it up. Clearance angle here is only about one degree on the on the carbide tape, but I can't go any further out. I have nothing to do. I don't have the right tool at the moment. Seems doing well. Okay, let me finish that off and we'll come back. So we're done so far. It's just doing a bit of chamfering here. done there's a little bit of a corner left but that's far within the old one so I'm happy with that surface looks good it's a bit smoother than the other one but uh, nothing I can do okay let's get that out and do the other side oh, and that's how it looks in the sunlight we need to wind the piston back uh, we greased up all the corners I always 
I always break these edges a little bit because otherwise they're digging into these ears there and uh, the the hook with it, well the notch basically because they're different on both sides the notchy part goes to the front I'm not entirely sure if this is as recommended by cheap but it works best for me because if you do it the other way around they have a tendency to bind uh, and so I worked out this is the best way to do it uh, just grease up the back a little bit make sure it's not squeaking we need to wind the piston back and when you do that always check your level in the uh, brake fluid reservoir because if you wind it back it will raise and eventually it will overflow so we're about here now just in the middle between empty and full and um, now we're gonna wind them back I just use a, an F clamp for that because the brakes the this type of uh, caliper does allow that on others you you can use a special rewind tool but it works great for me with that one and as we can see we're not even fully back and we're about to overflow here so we need to suck that out I just use that brake um, bleeding suction thing there's a venturi inside and if you push it it's sucking on that end so our level is down now a little bit so we can pump that up never reuse the brake the brake fluid and because the brake fluid is hygroscopic and it's accumulating water so the boiling point goes down and then you've got other issues always now we're full again it's quite a bit of volume in this calipers here all right let me finish that and then we reassemble it so we're fully back now um, when before you reassemble it make sure these are running these uh, pins are actually moving smooth which they do sort of uh, because otherwise you may have issues that the brakes are actually doing uh, they can bind or they, they stick and it's it's a pain because if you go in the mud um, it's yeah the, the brake is not actually designed for being in the mud but it happens anyway um, let's put the pads in and uh, reassemble it so and that's how it looks back together uh, again the hooks the notch here the open part at the bottom and uh, should be alright let's get a tire on it to the other side that's how the old pads were looking so it was time to do this one is the same much left there they got about 10,000 miles now well the other side doesn't look much better a little bit more left on the outside but uh, it's time to go as well this seems to be sticky this as well both of these uh, sliders need to need attention because they are a bit stiff we set up in the lathe again for the second one we're doing the left hand side first because I got everything set up for that so let's give that a try I'm not gonna film that because it's boring all right okay number two is done surface looks good other side is done as well again it's a bit smoother than the other side there were a lot of grooves in it so I had to take a little bit more off but it's still fine uh, in thickness so let's get that off and so let's hit that and uh, job done and these are the pins you can just push them through you just need to get them off that notch here and then you can just push it out give them a clean a bit of grease and they will slide fine that's what we're gonna do it's uh, just dried grease I think the other one is the same so and that's the other side done the, the reason why I'd like to skim the brake discs a little bit is because all the grooves and all the wear um, and they are very polished as well makes it hard for the new pads to wear in so 
it's not a lot of work and uh, if you know what you're doing and obviously make sure you uh, keep the minimum diameter of your discs uh, it just makes you better brakes straight from the beginning once you're done pump the pedal until you feel resistance and check your level in your brake fluid reservoir we are right at the top maybe it's a little, a little bit over we leave that because they will wear in and settle in a little bit so the piston moves a bit further anyway so it will consume a little bit more fluid we'll check that tomorrow when we've driven a few miles and uh, then we'll see all right that's a uh, job done get a tire on get rid of our winter tires put the summer tires on and uh, that's it thanks for watching thanks for subscribing until next time